Hey everybody, welcome back to Inside Indiana Overtime. Alex McCarthy here. Uh, I am obviously not in Fort Wayne. Uh, I'm home in Michigan for a couple days for Thanksgiving with the family, but uh, I did watch it here uh, as Indiana lost its first game of the season in a uh, pretty shocking but dramatic fashion in Fort Wayne, uh, 71-68 in overtime to the Fort Wayne Mastodons, formerly known as the IPFW Mastodons. Um, and it's just, it, it's a game that Indiana really never had control of whatsoever. They only led for a little over a minute of this game and uh, and just on both sides of the floor they're just glaring issues. Um, I mean they were just relying heavily on the three-point shot early on, which they've done all year really, um, but the difference between the first four games, or the, the first three games and this one, Indiana was making a lot of their shots. You know, you, you saw against Kansas they still weren't really working the ball through the paint as much as maybe they wanted to. Um, they, they were still settling for jump shots a lot, but they were making them. Uh, tonight in Fort Wayne, they were not making them. Uh, they, um, in the first half, more than half of their, or close to half of their shots were three-pointers. Um, they ended up tonight um, shooting 29%, 7 for 24 from beyond the arc, um, which is just a very non-Indiana thing to be doing. Um, they just looked all out of sorts on that end of the floor um, and were very inconsistent in terms of, of how much they were able to, to feed the post and how much they were able to get Thomas Bryan involved and, and get into the paint. Uh, it certainly didn't help that OG Ananobi uh, was sick tonight. He only played 13 minutes and quite frankly was not great in those 13 minutes. He was he looked sick. I mean he, he was sluggish, he was slow, he was um, just not the dynamic spark plug that, that Indiana has come to kind of expect him to be. So that was certainly a factor tonight um, with Ananobi on the bench. But on the defensive end, um, I mean, you have, to, you have to credit Fort Wayne's ball movement. You have to credit um, how well they rebounded uh, all night. Uh, Bryson Scott had a great game. Uh, Fort Wayne native who, who grew up very good friends with, with James Blackman. Um, he ended up with, with 18 points. Um, and and really looked looked fluid and made a couple of big plays on the defensive end as well. But uh, Indiana defensively just again looked just like a, a step slow. I mean they were struggling to to fight through screens. They were um, not really able to keep up with with the Fort Wayne ball movement, which to their credit was fantastic. Um, they were just all game just whipping the ball around, and, and they were able to um, get a few open shots from the outside. Um, didn't really rely that heavily. Uh, well, I guess they kind of did. They did take a lot of threes tonight. Uh, they took 31. Um, but they were able to get inside a lot. They were able to slash inside. And, and all night, there was, there was room in the paint for them. Uh, whether it was in transition, uh, whether it was in the half court and Indiana was just rotated a little bit wrong. It was, um, it was very reminiscent, and a lot of people said this on Twitter, but it was very reminiscent of what Indiana's defense looked like early in the season last year before... Big Ten play before you know the Notre Dame game, um, where they just had, it just looked a, a couple steps slow and it just looked like they were um, not prioritizing protecting the paint at all. Um, and and Fort Wayne must have seen something like that on film and, and exploited it hard tonight. Um, they led, <clears throat> excuse me, they led all game. Like I said, pretty much all game. They led by as many as twelve in the second half. Um, Indiana switched to a two-three zone, which really kind of gave the Mastodons fits in the last 10 minutes or so of regulation um, and in, in, in overtime as well. It was kind of an ugly uh, ugly five minutes of teams kind of just exchanging misses there. Um, but Fort Wayne only made, I think, one field goal in the last 9.49 of the game, uh, which was which allowed Indiana to get back into the game to tie it. Thomas Bryant hit a couple free throws there at the end um, to force overtime, and, and Indiana just still, I mean, they just... It never seemed like really they really were able to kind of capitalize on, on momentum and, and go on a run. They they went on a run to end the first half as well, um, which ended with a, with a Thomas Bryant bucket that cut it to just two points at halftime. And, and you know he was all excited going in, into the locker room, you know, doing his little thing to the fans. Um, but then you know the second half starts and, and Fort Wayne just grabs control of the game again. Um, it was the same thing kind of at the end of regulation and into overtime where. Um, Indiana closed on a 13-3 run to force overtime and then 
couldn't do anything with it, with it really to start overtime. And, um, you know, Fort Wayne hit a shot to start overtime, then I think Rob Johnson answered with one, and then IPF to, or Fort Wayne, excuse me, was just able to stay just one step ahead of Indiana um, throughout the rest of overtime, and, and they made their free throws down the stretch. They didn't shoot that many, but they made them down the stretch. Um, Indiana did not shoot too well from the from the line, and, and really didn't get to the line very much. I mean, that was kind of one of the one of the very glaring issues tonight. They they shot 19 free throws and made 11 of them, um, and you know you, you got to shoot better than whatever that was, 58 percent. Um, just, I mean, you know, in a, in a game like this especially, um, they just were not able to, to capitalize on those kind of situations. Uh, Bryant was 5 for 8, Johnson was 2 for 4, Newkirk was also 2 for 4, and it, it's just, you know, it's not really one guy shooting badly or doing anything like that, uh, but Bryant was the, when he did get the ball in the paint inside the three-point line, he was able to do something with it. He led Indiana with 18 points, uh, finished with 12 rebounds, uh, but... I mean, they're just really, they were just all out of sorts uh, all over the place uh, offensively. and uh, There were a lot of wasted possessions, whether it was a turnover, whether it was a bad shot. Um, there were just a lot of possessions where Indiana, you know, you look at it and, you're, and you just think that that really just has no chance of working. Whether it's a turnover, whether it's a contested three, whether it's, um, you know, and a lot of times, they, you know, they missed layups a few times and they there were a couple times where they, they kind of put their heads down and drove and were right under the basket. Um, so there's just just a lot of issues for Indiana tonight. I mean, people have made comparisons to how Indiana looked in Maui last year to how they looked tonight in Fort Wayne. And um, I mean, Indiana looked really bad in Maui last year, but they, look, they looked pretty bad tonight as well. I mean, that's um, it's just hard to, to really come out of this game with that many positives for Indiana um, as they head to, uh, they head back home where they haven't lost in, you know, two seasons. <laughs> um, uh, well, the, since they haven't lost since two seasons ago, I should say. Uh, but they play Mississippi Valley State. That's kind of the tune-up game, the last tune-up game before they welcome North Carolina to Assembly Hall. Uh, North Carolina probably is going to be a top five team at that point. Indiana, probably not anymore. Um, Indiana was ranked third in the AP this week, and uh, um, it'll be interesting to see how far they, they kind of tumble there, but um, we'll see what happens Sunday against Mississippi Valley State. Uh, and, and, and to be fair, Fort Wayne is a pretty good team it, it, um, for, its, for its level. I mean, they, there's a lot of talent there. Bryce and Scott, who I mentioned, is a former Purdue player. Um, th there's a lot of talent on that team. Um, so it's not an enormous, crazy upset. I mean, it's kind of similar to Eastern Washington a couple years ago uh, when you know, Indiana lost at home, which was even worse, I guess, than this. But Eastern Washington, pretty decent team. Um, kind of similar feel with, with Fort Wayne, where they, you know, they, they, they opened up shots for themselves and they made those shots. I mean, the, the ball movement was great. They made the shots they needed to. Uh, they executed defensively. They just, all around, awesome effort from, from, from the Dons tonight, as, uh, as the locals call them. So, um, we'll see. Indiana's last tune-up here in a couple days. I'll be back in Bloomington for that. Uh, but until then, thanks for watching. And uh, and remember, it's only you know it's only November 23rd. So don't freak out too much. Don't um, you know the sky is not falling yet. So um, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll be back talking with you soon. But for now, I'm gonna get out of here. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.